we had five fantastic days of mountain passes. The four of us were Kobus, Brenda, Barbara and Steve. Most of the time we overnighted at Kobus and Brenda's place in Hartenbos. The passes either side Herbertsdale were not that impressive as they were on tar roads. The Horitz River Pass was really impressive. This is a Google map of it. From the bridge the path ascends up the opposite mountain using a concrete lane. It is really steep and quite impressive. We saw some little buck down in the valley below us but because they were so far away we weren't able to figure out what type they were. After Van Weegstorp we tackled the Rooiberg Pass which was really extremely rocky and rather long. We took some photos down the other side and eventually joined up with the road from Oetsroen back to George via the Robinson Pass. On day two, we travelled to the hill, also known as Hamkas Kloof, via the Otaniqua Pass, Oetshoorn and the Swartberg Pass. Once you're over the top of Swartberg Pass, you get to the Otto Duplessis turnoff to the hill and at one stage you can see the road snaking away into the distance. It's approximately 40 kilometers long. En route we saw a few dacre at the side of the road. The most memorable part of the day is traversing the Elandspat Pass which is extremely steep and said to be the second highest in South Africa. Once down in Hamkas Kloof, we retrieved the key to the Kurt Cordier cottage from the ranger and had a good look around. Gas stove, bunk bed for Kobus and Brenda, Barbara and I were allowed to stay in the double bed and the potty was made use of. These are the ladies waiting for supper. The third day saw us return to Hartenbos via Elands Pass once again with its extremely tight hairpin bends and drop-offs. At the top of the pass we once again got to the middle of Swartberg Pass and descended through some extremely impressive rock formations to Prince Albert. Then via Meiringsport and the Otaniqua Pass back to Heart and boss. On the fourth day, we headed for Uniondale via Montague Pass. En route, we came across the toll house which had been restored. Barbara slid down the embankment to the river which we crossed 
using one of the restored bridges. The pass has some dry walls, just as Bain usually did. And we eventually got to Uniondale, had lunch, and traversed the Uniondale port, connecting up with the little town of Aventir and down Prince Albert's Pass. This is the longest pass in the country at around 60 kilometers in length. The last section of the pass goes across hill after hill after hill and then terminates through some lovely indigenous forest. We stopped over in Neisner and had some lunch. On the final day, we did the seven passes between George and Neisner. The seven passes also have seven bridges across seven rivers. However, not all of the bridges allow you to stop, get out and take photos because the road is rather narrow. Some of them, however, are great and you can stretch your legs. This is the map of Africa, with the point nearest to you being Cape Town. The next impressive sight was a massive yellowwood tree in the forest.